we're, we're a data company, and we have a, a several different types of data products that solve different pieces of either data management or, or we offer data products um, as a service. So pricing data, qualitative data, security master related data, and then our software manages all of the data that was that was really just mentioned because it's a it's a lot more data than we would tr traditionally have to interact with, and it's been. Um, accumulating over over a decade really without any standard setters involved. So it makes it very tricky to make the data usable. And so we've developed an expertise in, in making all of this crypto transaction, pricing, and other data usable across all of our different products. Right. So so how you are seeing um, does uh, the blockchain and this use of robust data in your in your market uh, disrupting the financial markets and how you you see it's uh, like evolving in this uh, scenario. There's a lot of different data to use, and a lot of what we're used to relying on in traditional markets just simply isn't doesn't exist, or there's there's too many options. Um, for example, determining fair market value for an actively traded crypto asset is is very tricky. We developed one response to that problem that we call Luca Prime. Um, Coinbase is a customer of it. They also have their own data. Most people that don't know data intimately don't understand that relationship. You know, Coinbase as a, a large publicly traded centralized exchange requires different types of data in order to operate its business. And sometimes their own pricing data isn't necessarily the only solution that, that they need to rely on. Um, just to give one, one example. And now we start mixing DEXs, uh, on-chain data, off-chain data, collecting it, normalizing it becomes very, very challenging. And it's become very relevant in all the ETF or index creations that we're seeing out there. And as we're, uh, as we're seeing them create it, we have to solve problems that uh, people aren't used to solving before. For example, out of all the centralized exchanges, which one represents a principal market? We can, we can determine uh, fair market value from their prices. And that's, that's very tricky in, in a decentralized ecosystem where there are no formally established principal markets, just to give one, one example of a problem that we solve today with our, uh, our products. I think I will drive a little bit to data protection and privacy. Um, so so, so um, Luca not only handles, the, like delivers data to clients, but also handles uh, clients' data, right? But primarily transaction data, I think, which is where you're going with this. When you're when you're dealing with PII or any personal identifying information, um, there's a lot more rules, a lot more things that you have to do, and you have to make sure that you're treating that data properly. For the vast majority of our services today, we do not have to interact with it. Okay. We're usually interacting with an anonymized customer ID. Um, so, for example, if we're supporting Coinbase with their information reporting, then we would use an anonymized ID, perform our services, clean up the data, quantify it so that it can fit into all the tax reporting on a very large scale because they have an immense amount of data, and, um, and then actually not interact with the privacy data deliberately because we don't need to, which is a best practice. If you don't, if you don't need your vendor to interact with privacy data, you should, you should not, and you should avoid that um, if you can. And... Um, and that, that is part of the good news with a lot of, uh, a lot of the reporting. When we're doing it B2B, when you're doing direct to consumers, of course, uh, your business like Coinbase, you, you have to interact with it a lot. So, How you are um, in your organizations improving your cybersecurity policies and dealing with all this uh, increase of uh, frauds and hackers and, and cyber attacks? I mean, it's... Uh, it's never ending, and, and any company that exists in 2023 needs to be constantly combating cyber attacks. I mean, it's it's a bit ridiculous, and I think in a post-pandemic world that that um, exacerbated it even even more. Honestly, there's more people sitting in front of computers, I assume, and um, and there's a lot of opportunity for theft um, digitally. So it's very important. It all starts with, with risk management and, and things that businesses have had to do for a while. We might have to continue to do it in more innovative ways. Um, but uh, but old-fashioned risk governance inside of your organization um, is, uh, is the beginning of what, what leads to a mature cybersecurity or InfoSec program. And, uh, and I think all types of businesses need to manage this. I mean, even my own personal information, it's, it's almost a a joke how many times my social security number and date of birth has been part of a breach um, from so many different businesses. I don't even consider it PII or, or private at all anymore. 
Um, but a lot of other data is, and it's very important that we, you know, that we have proper safeguards in place.